Welcome to Patty G's Quick Tips number three. Let's learn how to safely test an outlet. Okay, let me show you a little theory about how AC current works. Alternating current. Let's say we have zero volts across this line. Zero volts. Let's say we have 120 volts across this line. If we were going to measure from here to here, that would be 120 volts. Now let's add a second 120 volts on this line. Now, let's say that our voltage starts at zero here and climbs to 120 volts. But AC current is going to reverse direction, go back the other way, return again, and go back the other way, etc., etc., etc. Now that we know the theory, let's take a look at the mechanics of it. Let's pretend this is your outlet. There's one hole on the bottom that's round or D-shaped, and that's your ground. There's a small slot on this side, and that's your hot. That's where all the voltage potential is. And then there's a larger size slot on this side. Now, for years and years and years, I thought if it's larger, it's got to be the hot, right? No, that's not right. So this is hot, this is neutral, this is the return path for the AC current, <clears throat> and then you have your ground. The thing to remember, all three of these can kill you. Did your mama ever tell you not to stick anything in an electrical outlet? Yes, my mama told me that, I didn't always listen. Yeah, just call me Sparky. That's not funny, this is very serious, this will kill you. So, what we wanna do is we wanna know how to test an outlet to make sure that it's wired properly. Enough theory. Let's get down to the mechanics now. So the easiest tool to use is a little device like this. It actually plugs into the outlet and it will test for various conditions on the outlet that may make it unsafe. And you simply plug it in. So the red light is not lit and the two amber lights are. Now there's a legend on the front that tells us that it is functioning normally. Now this thing will also tell you if the neutral is loose, that's the big slot, if it's disconnected, if the ground is disconnected, um, if there's no power, if this thing doesn't light up at all, that means the outlet's dead. These things are about six bucks. You can get them anywhere. Walmart's got them. Um, any hardware store, big box store. Everybody has these things. Moving up a step, this is a non contact outlet tester. And turn it on and hold it near a power source. That tells us that there's power on this power strip. And I don't have to touch it, it's non-contact. Let's turn the thing off. <clears throat> and there's no power. But we know there's power getting to the switch. So let's come over here to the switch. No power over here. But there's power where it's fed by this white wire. I got this one at Home Depot, I think. Again, you can get them anywhere. You can get them electrical supply houses, big box stores, hardware stores. These run from 10 to 20, 30 bucks. This is a good one, it costs 25 bucks. So, third way, last one. We're gonna use an actual meter to test this outlet. And you have to be extremely careful when you put things in these outlets, right? <clears throat> Your mama told you so. So I've got my 25 year old triplet meter. And, uh, so 9015 actually. We're going to set the meter up for AC volts on the 200 volt scale. So we're reading zero volts. Now you take the probes, holding it by the plastic. Don't hold it by the metal when you stick these things in there, okay? So you put one of these in the small slot and the other in the, in the large slot. And you take the reading on the meter. As you can see, 
122.5 volts. Standard house current can vary from 110 to about 125 to 127 volts. <clears throat> so that's well within spec. Now we can also test for some other conditions. We should get that same reading between the hot and the ground. That's the square hole. And there we are, 122.5. Now, there should be no voltage between the ground and the neutral. That's the big slot. So let's test that. I have two tenths of a volt. Now, in the computer business, we wanted to see less than half a volt between neutral and ground. Any more than that could cause issues on, on larger computer systems. That voltage on ground, consider it noise. Consider it um, something to uh, cause other devices that reference that ground to suffer degradation in performance. These are the three most common ways to test outlets in your home. If you're going to work on it, something like this. If you're going to change the outlet, um, something like this, six bucks, piece of cake. To tell you everything you need to know which is is the power on i'm going to say this anyway i know many of you know this but don't work on an outlet with the power on i don't do it i've been wearing outlets for a long time i don't do it i know guys can swap outlets i've seen them swap outlets and switches with the power on i've done it myself a few times but you know life's too short don't take a chance six bucks keep safe and we also use the non-contact circuit checker. This tests for the presence of voltage. You don't have to touch this. You just got to get close. Uh, it's great for finding a hot wire, like in a ceiling light when I wired these uh, fluorescent fixtures. I was able to locate the actual hot wire that was coming to the outlet, but it should be black, and I was able to isolate the actual hot wire with this thing. And this one, by the way, has this built into the end of it. So you can plug it in and read your lights. And lastly, we used an actual meter, which told us the presence of voltage. We read it at 122 and a half volts. It tells us that um, we have a good ground and that neutral and ground are bonded together. They're actually tied together. I have a three wire service entrance, three wires coming into my house. They're actually tied together at the breaker box. Hey, thanks for watching Page E's quick tips number three. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Be safe. Be careful. Think.